this week at the University of Rhode Island. A serious skateboarding accident on our Kingston campus. Student frustration builds over campus parking after new changes were made by Parking Services. A smartphone app created by a URI student that makes sharing contact information easy. And a look on how our new freshman class should properly adjust when starting a new chapter in their lives. And all of that and more on this week's Five Cent Cigar Newscast. Hello everyone, I'm Sierra Bishop. I'm Jessica Pace. Welcome back, URI. It's great to be on campus, but it's just a little bittersweet starting senior year. I know, I agree with you, Jess. Yesterday, it feels like we were freshmen. We're covering a developing story in Kingston. A serious skateboarding accident happened last Thursday night on the Kingston campus. It happened on West Alumni Avenue, just west of Butterfield Road. That's where we have Five Cent Cigars' Margot Gagnon live right now. Thanks, Jess. I'm standing here at the corner of West Alumni Avenue and Butterfield Road where last Thursday night a serious accident occurred between a vehicle and a student on a skateboard. That accident left the student on the skateboard having to be airlifted to a hospital in Providence, which is where he currently is now. I spoke with URI Police Chief Stephen Baker about the accident and the current condition of the student. We got a call actually from the, uh, the driver of the, the vehicle uh, who stated that uh, uh, there had been an accident involving his, his vehicle and, and a skateboard. Baker said that after his officers and EMS arrived on the scene, it was evident that the student on the skateboard has sustained a serious head injury and Lifestar was immediately called to the scene. You know, it was an unfortunate accident, you know, but uh, it's a, you know, an opportunity to learn about the, the dangers of, uh, of uh, skateboarding. Both skateboarders and pedestrians need to be aware of their surroundings so that similar accidents can be avoided in the future. We, uh, they have to follow the same rules as pedestrians, you know, don't assume you know, and that goes for pedestrians too. Don't assume that vehicles are going to stop for for you uh, in the in the in the crosswalks. Uh, they are supposed to. Yes, that's the law. But uh, you know, we've had pedestrian accidents too, where people pedestrians are right, but they still got hurt. This intersection behind me is very busy, and students need to be mindful when they are trying to cross the roads. Yeah, I ride my penny board a lot. This kid, this kid knows. Like, just this little area is now known to be like pretty deadly out of like most most of the street, like corners or you know, intersections on this campus. Baker said that the accident is still under investigation and that he hopes the injured student gets better soon. And uh, you know obviously we're you know our, our thoughts and prayers go to him and his family. Baker said that the family of the student that was injured in the accident would like to keep the details of his recovery private but Baker did hear that the student is improving. Live in Kingston, Margo Gagnon, Five Cent Cigar News. Thanks, Margo. The university would like to offer its support to the URI community in the days following this horrible accident. The Narragansett Town Council voted 5-0 to zero to appeal the four unrelated housing ordinance that was established in May of 2016. The ordinance was designed to limit four unrelated persons per household to control the volume of guests and their parties. It was originally approved because of the Eastward Look incident in May of 2014, where a college day party grew out of control. According to Housing and Residential Life, as of last year, 8,480 students either commuted from home or lived off campus in Eastward Look, Bonnet Shores, and other residential areas neighboring South Kingstown. Student frustration builds over campus parking after new changes were made by Parking and Transportation Services. I spoke with students about how these changes influenced their parking the first few weeks of classes. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on a school day and many URI parking lots seem to be at full capacity. I leave at least an hour to an hour and a half early, um, even though I only live 15 to 20 minutes down the road. Parking and Transportation Services sent out a statement about new parking changes back in August, and a graduate student, Marissa de Oliveira, started a petition in hopes students' concern will be heard. There was a huge need on campus. 
of the lack of student input that parking services has really taken not taken into consideration they've been sending out like other emails since kind of saying like we understand your concern but do you really joseph paradise manager of parking and transportation services said that there were more upgrades on parking rather than changes to parking policies uri upgraded parking lot signs based on designation to specific groups who park on campus the signs were made more informative clearly identifying the lots with numbers to match the campus map. The fine arts lot was newly paved over the summer and barriers were adjusted to compensate for construction on campus, allowing more spots for faculty and students. Keeney lot changed to residents only and soon the Dairy Barn lot will go under construction for new housing. According to Parking Services, 5,000 commuter permits are sold per year and there are about 3,500 total spots. By January 2018, 250 of those spots will be taken away because of construction. A large concern for students is parking in the furthest and biggest lot, Plains Road. Students say that it's the most inconvenient place to park on campus. Then I have to walk up a hill or take a bus, and if I'm late, like, it's just really stressful. I don't know, you pretty much have to, like, stalk a student to their spot. Some students don't seem to have much of a parking problem because their classes are all in the early morning. I usually just pull in and go to class, not too bad. Um, if you are, have a class, like, after 9 a.m. most of the time, you'll barely get a spot. With the rise of construction, parking and transportation services will do their best to accommodate drivers and their parking spots with other parking options. We're in Kingston, Jessica Pace, 5 Cent Cigar News. And now a look at your sports. The URI football team won their first game of the season, beating Harvard 17-10. This is the first time in the team's history that URI has beat Harvard. They play UNH this Saturday. And a new coach for URI's girls volleyball who has the team's best interest in mind. 5 Cent Cigar's Nikki Laterulo has the story. Volleyball season here at the University of Rhode Island is now in full swing and our women's team under a brand new head coach. I caught up with him earlier to get his thoughts on the new position. I hope I can, you know, make him proud of what he built. The here. 2016 women's volleyball season ended in retirement for former URI head coach Bob Schneck, who was with the Rams for 36 years. Steven Stanton Estaso, who has been the assistant coach for 12 years, was given the head coaching position last fall, and he says he's very prepared due to the time spent beside Coach Schneck. When I worked for Coach Schneck, um, there were you know, formative years of when I first started, and then, and then he allowed me to do some things that maybe other assistants didn't get to do. Um, it helped me learn how to better approach this, uh, this job and these responsibilities. Stanton Estaso says that as a head coach, he's beginning to understand the women not just as volleyball players, but also as people. This year's team is very diverse with five new freshmen along with eight upperclassmen. Trying to give them leadership opportunities to model the things that we want uh, the players to do and the program to be about. Uh. Rhode Island will be heading down to Davidson and VCU later this season to prep for the final tournament in Pittsburgh, where they hope to become Atlantic 10 champions. The Rhodey Rams starting their season with a 3-6 and six record. Now they're heading into a big tournament tomorrow in New Hampshire. And the coach tells me they hope to come out 6-6. Six and six. Live in Kingston, I'm Nikki Latarulo, 5 Cent Cigar Sports. When you first meet someone you want to connect with, it's a long process to share your phone number, Snapchat, and Instagram. A URI sophomore created an app looking to change that. Our Madeline Schulte has more. Students are always on their phone, typically doing one thing, making connections. We wanted it for, to be easier for college students to stay connected on social media. A sophomore at URI, Antonio Malagari, created an app that made making those connections a lot easier. It's called TAP. What TAP does is it connects to your, your social media profiles and your phone number, and then everything with it is consent based, so you choose which ones you want to share. Then you tap your phones together and you're connected on the profiles that you share. While most students may do their homework or listen to music in their dorm rooms, Melagari was busy brainstorming ideas for his app with his friends. We um, all had a lot of ideas and we collaborated on it. And then I think the, the biggest part about it is team. We also have um, two other equity partners who attend uh, Georgia Tech. And uh, I think once the, the five of us came together and really collaborated and worked together, that's how the, the project and the, the idea came to fruition. You can find the app by searching Tap Social Media in the Apple iTunes Store. I'm Madeline Schulte with 5 Cent Cigar News. 
The app now has 1,200 downloads from the App Store. A majority of these downloads have come from URI students over the past few weeks. According to undergraduate admissions, URI welcomes 3,356 freshman students to campus this year. With the start of a new school year, the freshmen are trying to adjust to their new life. The university wants to make this transition as smooth as possible. Brooke McCarthy has more on the resources the school provides the new students. New faces can be seen around the University of Rhode Island campus. The class of 2022 has moved in and students are now in the full swing of classes. The university is trying to make the transition for new students as smooth as possible. Yeah, the RAs have like been really helpful for me. I always feel comfortable talking to my RA about anything. Um, they do a really good job about like setting up programs and like meetings. And RAs, or residence assistants, are trained by the university and are selected from numerous applicants. RAs are taught how to involve their residents and to set up programs to get students interacting with one another. Through my dorm, there's always a bunch of people in my common room. And if I wanted to hang out with them, I can always just go in there because nine times out of ten, they're always there. Roosevelt Hall is home to URI's Counseling Center, where students who may be feeling a little overwhelmed can come and get the help that they may need. Um, so we'll talk with students in the beginning of the year about adjustment, you know, particularly first-year students, about adjustment to college and transitions from high school. But we'll also deal with anxiety, depression, um, thoughts of self-harm. The Counseling Center has walk-in hours Monday through Friday, and students can also call and make an appointment. The staff is fully trained, and their main goal is to help students in need. Um, you know, we work, we do trainings with um, RAs, and, um, and the, the Housing and Residential Life staff are very uh, focused on making students feel welcome. In the future, the university is flirting with the idea of an extended orientation for freshmen throughout their first year. Brooke McCarthy, The Good Five Cent Cigar News. Hurricane Irma left widespread devastation triggering severe flooding in the Florida's northeast corner. Authorities along the 400 mile path struggled to get aid to victims. We spoke to URI freshman Victoria Manning from Perry, Florida, who has family and loved ones still there. Honestly, like I was trying not to watch the news because it was making me so nervous because my boyfriend's back there and all my friends and these are people I've grown up with like my entire life like and I'm not there to like experience it with them. Manning tells us that there's just no way to prepare for something like this. She hopes that she will get to reunite with her loved ones as soon as possible. That's all we have for you this week. For more on your stories, you can find them on our website at roadiecigar.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Sierra Bishop. And I'm Jessica Pace. Thanks for watching and have a great semester, everyone.